Tonight on Y News. Philippine National Police may reinstate 17 policemen acquitted in the Ampatuan massacre case. Congressman Ismael Toto Mangudadatu fears for his security and that of the relatives of the Ampatuan massacre victims as many accused remain at large. The family of the 58 Ampatuan massacre victim, Reynaldo Bebot Momay, still search for justice after the court handed down a guilty verdict on most of the principal accused in the case. And former Ampatuan massacre case prosecutor recounts experience and challenges in handling one of the worst mass murders in Philippine history. Good evening. The Philippine National Police clarifies today that not all of the cops acquitted in the Ampatuan massacre case can be reinstated. Police vow to ensure the security of the families of the victims who may be receiving threats following the conviction of five of the seven principal accused Ampatuans. Harleen Delgado reports why. After the conviction of 43 out of the 197 accused in the Ampatuan massacre yesterday, some groups and families were disappointed because of the acquittals. Of the 62 accused cops, 19 were found guilty, while 36 were acquitted. But according to PNP spokesperson, Police Brigadier General Bernard Banak, not all the acquitted cops will be able to go back to service easily. Banak explains only 17 of the acquitted cops can go back to full duty status. The remaining 19 have already been dismissed from service. Should they wish to be reinstated, Banak says the dismissed cops can still appeal to the National Police Commission with only a slim chance of approval. All the acquitted cops, meanwhile, will not receive any back wages. Their acquittal does not necessarily translate to reinstatement. Ang PNP sa ang mismo ang siyang uh, magre-reinstate sa kanila, magre-restore into uh, full duty status. Uh, so balit, naroon pa rin sa kanila ang, ang uh, option kung nais na nilang umalis sa servisyo. The acquitted cops who will be reinstated will undergo training and reformation including mandatory drug tests, medical exam, and neuropsychiatric tests before reporting back to service. The PNP are also open to setting reward money for the immediate arrest of the 80 others accused who remain at large, 12 of whom are cops, according to the PNP. Bonak admits they are having difficulty in capturing those still on the loose, but adds that none of those have fled the country. PNP officer in charge, Police Lieutenant General Archie Gamboa, has ordered to double the efforts on manhunt operations against the fugitives. Well, we discount the possibility na sila ay nakalabas na sa bansa. Dahil uh, tukoy naman sila at identified, may mga standing warrants sa barest sila. Uh, mahirap na pakalusot sa Bureau of Immigration. So, mas makakabuti na payapa na lamang siyang uh, magbuluntaryong sumuko sa ating otoridad para po uh, sa kanya ng personal safety and uh, security. The PNP also vowed to the families of the mass murder victims they can provide permanent security detail should there be any serious threats to their lives. At ang lokal na PNP natin ay inatasan na ng ating uh, officer in charge, si General uh, Gamboa, na bigyan ng assistance no? at makipag-ugnayan agad sa pamilya ng mga biktima para po may, uh, may arrange natin ang uh, security measures Harleen Delgado, UNTV News and Rescue, Camp Krame. Congressman Esmael Toto Mangudadatu fears for his security and that of the relatives of the Ampatuan massacre victims. Asher Kadapan Jr. explains why. Maguindanao 2nd District Representative Esmael Toto Mangudadatu continues to appeal to authorities to take action towards the arrest of the 80 other accused in the Ampatuan Massacre who remain at large. Yun na nga yung lagi namin sinasabi, makipag-cooperate sa amin yung mga kapulisan, mga kasundaluhan para makuha na itong mga at-large na to kasi nakakatakot pa rin. Especially ngayon, may guilty verdict na resulta. So hindi natin maiwasan matakot yung mga kababayan po natin. Lalo-lalo sa mga pamilya ng mga biktima ng Maguindanao Massacre. He said it remains a threat to his security as well as to the relatives of the victims of the mass killing. Medyo naimasmasan, ano? Uh, ganun pa man, 
uh, may mga pangamba pa rin kasi yung 81 na at large na nandiyan pa rin sila. Kaya di pag na may nakachance yan, eh, talaga papatay na yan. The families of the victims are also concerned about the possible retaliation of those convicted. Siyempre, hindi natin ano, may iwan ka na yun doon sa mga nag-guilty na uh, sakdal ay may gagawing mga hakbangi na hindi maayos. Ano. Asher Kadapan Jr., UNTV News and Rescue, City of Manila. Justice has been finally served 10 years after the Ampatuan Massacre. But the family of photojournalist Reynaldo Bebot Momay laments the verdict. Nina Armilio tells us why. The Quezon City Regional Trial Court Branch 221 on Thursday jumped the 58th murder case in the decade-long trial of the Ampatuan Massacre involving the 58th victim, photojournalist Reynaldo Momay. Based on the 761-page ruling, Judge Jocelyn Solis Reyes said that though Momay's dentures were found, circumstance could not establish that he was there and that he was among the victims because his body was never found. Judge Solis Reyes thus acquitted all accused on the murder case filed for the death of Momai on the basis of reasonable doubt. Appeals can no longer be filed for dismissed criminal charges such as Momai's under the double jeopardy rule. A team of forensic experts from the Commission on Human Rights or CHR in 2012 found and verified Momai's dentures at the crime scene. This prompted the Department of Justice or DOJ to file a murder case for Momai. But Judge Solis Reyes ruled that the absence of Momai's body and the lack of death certificate could not be made certain that Momai was among the victims. She explained the prosecution relied only on mere say-so of the prosecution witnesses. That the victim wore the subject denture will not amply establish its identity. She further noted that assuming the dentures were indeed Momai's, it was not enough to establish that the photojournalist died in the hands of the convicted criminals. Momai's daughter, Maria Reina Fe Castillo, lamented the court's verdict saying their family is still in search of justice. Lawyer Harry Roque told the court their camp will appeal the denial of damages for Momai's family. Nina Armilio, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. The parents of one of the accused in the Ampatuan massacre case went emotional after hearing the court's decision. They felt confident their son is innocent of the crime accused of him. Dante Amento tells us why. Justice is served. The decade-long wait of the families of the victims in the Ampatuan Massacre finally ended yesterday. But not only they had suffered the hardship waiting for justice, even the families of the accused who believe their loved ones are innocent of the crime endured the long wait. Among them are couple Domingo and Omaira Ampatuan. Their son Jonathan Ampatuan is among the 197 accused in the case. They say Jonathan was applying to become a policeman when the incident happened. From Maguindana province on December 17 to witness the live promulgation of the verdict in the case in Camp Bagong Diwa on Thursday. But their names were not included among those given access to enter the camp. So they had no choice but to wait outside the gates of Camp Bagong Diwa all throughout the promulgation. And when Omaira heard his son was among those acquitted by the court, she went emotional. At last, their son can once again be a free man after the many years behind bars. Kasi matagal na po kami hindi nakapunta dito. Tinitingnan ko yung cellphone ko kanina. Yung ginawa ko sa... Nagdoon kami sa sulok kay para lang walang makaistorbo sa amin. Tinitingnan namin yung cellphone kaya hindi kami makapasok. Grabe ang kasaya namin. Grabe. Kaya yung sabi ko sa'yo, madam, kumpiyansa ko sana ko. Kumpiyansa ko. Congressman Ismail Toto Mangudadato, on his part, assures he will not appeal the court's decision, although he admits he wanted Sajid Ampatuan to be convicted. Mga apila pang gagawin yan eh. Uh, Inexpected namin yan. Pero kung mga, mga magkaruman ng uh, final conviction, kumbaga, eh dapat sa panahon na yan, may bitay na. Dante Amento, UNTV News and Rescue, Taguig City. Judge Jocelyn Solis Reyes will continue working with close in security even after the day of the promulgation of judgment on the Ampatuan massacre case. 
The NCRPO, meanwhile, will remain on full alert status until January next year. Leia Ilagan details why. The National Capital Region Police Office or NCRPO will continue to secure Judge Jocelyn Solis Reyes even after the promulgation of the verdict of the Ampatuan massacre case. Quezon City Judge Solis Reyes handed down yesterday the decision on one of the biggest cases in the decade. NCRPO Acting Director, Police Brigadier General Devold Sina says even the House of Judge Reyes will be guarded. Ang agreement namin po sa Kuan, sa Supreme Court Administration, ang security niya, ang close-in niya, tuloy pa rin po. Until that time that the judge will already ano yan, uh, feel na yung, yung situation is back to normal and hindi na, wala na siya agam-agam. General Sinas also confirms the security situation in Camp Baguntiwa has returned to normal after yesterday's monumental event. The relatives of those acquitted in the Ampatuan massacre case may already enter the camp. Accordingly, when we coordinate with the BG, they will process it. And uh, Paisa is a release now. Upon their, uh, once their uh, procedures are complied. So, kami, uh, hindi na po kami private noon. Amin lang is yung, kung papasok, pasundurin sila, it's okay. Minumonitor lang namin kasi dadaan pa rin sa kampo namin sila. The Metro Manila District Jail Annex in Lower Bikutan, Taguig City will resume inmates visitation. The NCRPO will remain on full alert status until January. Leia Ilagan, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. A former member of the DOJ prosecution panel in the Ampatuan Massacre case recounts his experiences in handling what is considered one of the worst mass murders in Philippine history. Even he is satisfied with a court ruling released yesterday. Japet Kablaida tells us why. Judge Aristotel Aris Reyes used to be one of the prosecutor in the Ampatuan Massacre case. He is currently the Regional Trial Court Judge in Lucena City, Quezon Province. As a member of the Department of Justice or DOJ's Second Prosecution Panel, he was one of those who handled the mass murder case from 2019 until 2013. He recounts for more than three years, he experienced a lot of pressure and challenges due to the case. During that time, talagang very uh, toxic yung case. In fact, ang uh, arrangement ko ni sa uh, naging member ka ng DOJ panel is uh, as much as possible, wala kang ibang i-handle the case except yung Malindanao Massacre case. Judge Reyes adds ensuring the security of the witnesses was a huge challenge. What with the number of the threats to their lives? Ang pinakamahirap ko sa... Imagine ang dami ng witnesses namin. Siguro during the time na sa pre-trial namin, nasa 300 yung, or 200 yung listed witnesses. So kinakarpulan na namin, gaano katagal ito matatapos? <laughs> Judge Reyes resigned from the DOJ prosecution panel in 2013 due to some misunderstanding he noticed between the panel and the lawyers of some of the victims. He believed that the case they built against the accused especially the Ampatuans, was strong. Anyway, sabi ko, magtatapos na naman ang prosecution evidence. Time na umalis ako, nagre-rest na. As a judge himself, he says he admires the courage and metal of Quezon City RTC Judge Jocelyn Solis Reyes in handling the case and handing down the verdict. Japet Kablaida, UN TV News and Rescue, Lucena City. Welcome back to Y News. We pick up to where Rosalie Cause left off. I am Alex Baltazar and here are the headlines. President Rodrigo Duterte to make an announcement on the issue of water concession deals in January 2020. Department of Trade and Industry to ask the Philippine National Police to confiscate firecrackers without product safety marking. The Land Transportation Franchising and Regulatory Board reinforces Oplan Isnabero against errant cab drivers. And Kasambahay is in the National Capital Region to get 1,500 peso wage hike. 
Good evening. Malacanang says President Rodrigo Duterte will make an important announcement on the issue of water concession deals in January 2020. Rosalie Cross reports why. This seems to be unstoppable on the issue of the controversial water concession agreement. On January 6, 2020, he will make an important announcement according to Presidential Spokesperson and Chief Presidential Legal Counsel Salvador Panelo. Sabi niya, hindi siya papayag na walang mangyari sa kaso. When he says that, what does he mean? Uh, yeah. Let's wait. He said he will make an important announcement on January 6. The palace official also said the chief executive remains firm on his stand that he wants to face those who crafted the 1997 water concession agreements between the Metropolitan Waterworks and Sewerage System or MWSS and Manila Water Services and Manila Water Company. I do not know whether I will survive this, but I will not allow this to happen. What I have to I think what he meant is he will not step out of the presidency without resolving this issue. The chief executive slams the alleged onerous provisions in the concession deals and directs his cabinet members to craft a new agreement. This after the government junked the extension of water concession deals, which will expire in 2022. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue. Domestic helpers across Metro Manila will receive an extra amount in their monthly salary after the Regional Tripartite Wages and Productivity Board formally granted a pay hike amounting to 1,500 pesos. The said wage increase states that new monthly minimum salary rate for domestic workers in the National Capital Region or NCR would soon be 5,000 pesos. Prior to the new order, household helpers in Metro Manila only receive 3,500 pesos as provided for by wage order number NCR DW01 effective December 2017. The order covers housemaids, nannies or yaya, cooks, laundry persons, and gardeners, but it excludes family drivers, service providers, and part-timers. The wage order will take effect 15 days after publication in a newspaper of general circulation. Several stores that sell firecrackers in Bukawi Town, Bulacan Province were inspected by the authorities. Nothing was confiscated, but the Department of Trade and Industry reminds the vendors about the importance of product safety marking. Joe Anano tells us why. Department of Trade and Industry or DTI personnel conducted an inspection on several firecracker stores in Bukawi, Bulacan. The DTI scrutinized various types of firecrackers to determine if they have product safety or PS marking. According to DTI Assistant Secretary for Consumer Protection Group Attorney Anne Claire Cabuchan, all fireworks sold must have PS markings. A PS marking serves as an indication a product passed the safety standards set by the Bureau of Philippine Standards to assure they are safe to use. Lalo na yung produkto na medyo delicate to handle, kung hindi yan dumaan ng certification process, yung manufacturing nila, tsaka yung handling, storage at lahat, eh hindi dumaan sa tamang proseso, mas malaki yung magiging danger. The DTI also made an inventory of firecrackers with no PS markings. According to Assistant Secretary Kabuchan, they will turn over their findings and record following today's inspection to the Philippine National Police to ask them to confiscate the items. But the vendors reiterate the firecrackers they are selling are safe to use. They even claim they have acquired the necessary permits. Yung po mga tinda natin firecrackers po, safe po yan kasi po may mga PS mark lahat yon At saka po, ano naman po, may mga papeles kami yung dokumento po para doon. Sigurado naman pong safe naman yan. Wala naman po tayong bawal ay tinitinda. The DTI warns the public the license of Phoenix Fireworks expired on Wednesday, December 18. For now, only Tiger Fireworks Philippines and Pegasus Fireworks are the only legitimate firecracker manufacturers allowed by the DTI. The agency clarifies, however, the public may still buy the old stock of Phoenix firecrackers since those were manufactured prior to the expiration of its license. As of now, the sale of firecrackers is still not in demand. This is why several vendors are complaining. They also urge Phoenix Fireworks to process the renewal of its license because of the impact of its expired license on firecracker vendors. We want to use it because it's in our product. 
Sana inayos ng mga nagdala sa amin yung ano namin kasi ala na po kung naman po kami ang alam. Kami po nag-aayos ng amin disensya. Kasi may paano po kami, paano naman po kami magtitinda. Kaya yun lang po kinabubuhay. Minsan lang po, sinso na lang po ang hanap buhay namin eh. John Anano, UNTV News and Rescue, Bukawi, Bulacan. The number coding scheme for provincial buses will be lifted during the holiday season, the Metropolitan Manila Development Authority or MMDA announced. In a memorandum, the agency said the scheme is suspended from December 23, 24, 26, 27, and 31, 2019, and on January 2, 2020. The MMDA said this is to accommodate more passengers that may travel to provinces and back to spend the holidays. The agency did not include the dates December 25 and 30, 2019 and January 1, 2020 as these are regular holidays when the number coding scheme is automatically suspended. With the anticipated influx of passengers this holiday season, the Land Transportation Franchising and Regulatory Board or LTFRB will strengthen its Oplan Isnabero against errant taxi drivers. In a statement, the LTFRB said the high-end operations will begin on December 20, Friday, and will last until January 3, 2020. The agency urged the public anew to file a complaint against taxi drivers who violate the said policy. For queries and concerns, the public may reach the LTFRB through its hotline 1342. They may also call the DOTR hotline 87908 slash 87908 The Health Department warns against drinking alcohol during the holiday season. The DOH also reminds of moderation in food and beverage consumption during this time of the year. Aiko Miguel tells us why. Vehicular accident, fireworks related injuries. These are the common incidents recorded by the Department of Health or DOH during the holiday season. The DOH says one of the main causes of such untoward incidents is alcohol intoxication. Ang ayaw kasi natin lalong-lalo na yung binge drinking, no? Yung iinom na isang upuan, eh, pito, walong beer, o kaya, di ba, isang eh, walong shot ng mga distilled drinks, katulad ng gin, ng rum. According to Health Undersecretary Eric Domingo, binge alcohol drinking doesn't only harm one's health, but also makes a person prone to accidents. Pero yung binge drinking, pwedeng isang upuan lang kapag uminom ka ng napakarami, pwede kang maaksidente, no? mapipinsala ka, at maaari ka pa makapinsala ng ibang tao. The health official adds, in 2020, Filipinos will gradually lessen their consumption of alcoholic drinks because of the full implementation of the law imposing higher taxes on alcoholic beverages. Tutuwa naman tayo na naipasa na rin ang mas mataas na buwis sa alcohol. This will take effect sa 2020. So hopefully, yung darating na taon, mababawasan. The DOH also warns the public to avoid salty, fatty, oily, and sweet foods this holiday season. Excessive consumption of these foods may lead to hypertension, diabetes, kidney failure, and heart diseases. Adequate water intake is advised. The consumption of fruit juices which are rich in vitamin C, which serves as a body shield during cold weather when flu is common, is also advisable. The DOH reminds the public anything in excess won't bring any good. Food and drinks should be consumed in moderation, especially this holiday season. Ang prevention po, mapiprevent natin ang maraming sakit at sakuna sa pag-iingat lamang at pagbabantay no, sa ating kakainin, sa ating iinumin at sa mga gagawin nating activities ngayong holidays. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. President Rodrigo Duterte will spend the holiday season together with his family in Davao City. The chief executive will celebrate simply just like in previous years. President Duterte is also expected to visit young cancer patients in Davao City this holiday. He started doing it when he was still the city mayor. Sabi niya, he will just be with his family, with his grandchildren, as he usually do. Members of the House of Representatives are pushing for the resumption of peace talks between the Philippine government and the National Democratic Front at the Philippines, or NDFP. Vincent Arboleda will tell us why.
A resolution showing the support of the House of Representatives for the resumption of peace talks between the government and the National Democratic Front of the Philippines or NDFP has been filed in the lower house of Congress. House Resolution 636, signed and backed by 131 legislators from different political parties in the House of Representatives, was filed yesterday. According to Bayan Muna Party List Representative Carlos Zarate, the resolution is a strong message of support from the members of the House in pursuing peace process to end the more than five-decade armed rebellion. The resolution mentioned the Hague Joint Agreement of 1992 and the Stand Down Agreement of 2018 as its basis for the resumption of the peace talks. The Stand Down Agreement which was signed on June 2018 binds the Philippine Army, Police and the New People's Army, the armed wing of the Communist Party of the Philippines and a member organization of the NDFP from any hostilities as a measure of goodwill and confidence building measures. Congressman Zarate hopes that the peace talks between the Philippine government and the NDFP will resume without preconditions and in accordance with previously set agenda and agreements. Vincent Arboleda, UNTV News and Rescue, House of Representatives. Welcome back to Wine News. The Department of Foreign Affairs or DFA is expediting the process of repatriating overseas Filipino workers or OFWs in crisis hit Lebanon. The agency has sent a three-man rapid response team to the said country to augment the capacity of the Philippine Embassy in Beirut for the Philippine government's voluntary repatriation program. A large number of OFWs in Lebanon requested assistance to return home as the Western Asian nation struggles to recover from the current financial crisis there. The first batch of repatriates will depart Lebanon December 21. The municipality of Sarangani in Davao Occidental will have a good view of the annular solar eclipse, which is going to be the last one this year, weather permitting. Scientists warn to protect the eyes when watching the phenomenon. Ray Pelayo tells us why. The occurrence of the annular solar eclipse on December 26 is an extraordinary event for the Philippine Atmospheric, Geophysical and Astronomical Services Administration or PAGASA and astronomy enthusiasts. On that day, the moon will pass between Earth and the Sun, thereby partially obscuring the Sun for a viewer on Earth. It will be visible in Saudi Arabia, Qatar, the United Arab Emirates, Oman, India, Sri Lanka, Malaysia, Indonesia, Singapore, Philippines, Northern Marianas Island, and last in Guam. The full annular eclipse will be viewed from Balut Island in Sarangani. The partial eclipse will start at 12.45 p.m. and will end at 3.58 p.m. The maximum eclipse will occur at 2.30 p.m. and will last for 2 minutes and 32.5 seconds. But Pagasa warns the public not to directly look at the sun because it will affect one's vision. A welding mask may be used as protection. Pagasa will set up telescopes on Balut Island and in their observatory in UP Diliman. One of the challenges will be the weather, especially that a weather disturbance is expected to affect the country next week. Pagasa said there is no scientific proof an eclipse affects the behavior of human or animals. The tides will be normal. This eclipse is a part of Saros Cycle 132, repeating every 18 years, 11 days, containing 71 events. Ray Pilayo, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. And for the news abroad, three people have died in India and thousands have been detained amid demonstrations against a controversial new citizenship law. A protest ban has been imposed in parts of the capital Delhi and throughout the states of Uttar Pradesh and Karnataka, Kath Dumaraos reports. At least three people have died in violent protests in India over a contentious legal amendment seeking to grant citizenship to illegal immigrants of all predominant faiths but Muslims. The deaths were reported on Thursday in the city of Mangalore in the state of Karnataka in the south of the country. More than 20 people were injured and more than 1,000 were arrested, including prominent intellectuals and activists in the demonstrations, which took place despite prohibitions of assembly imposed by the authorities. On Thursday, phone and internet services were suspended in several parts of New Delhi on the orders of the government in the areas close to the protest sites. 
Authorities imposed restrictions on the right to assemble under the Section 144 of the Indian Penal Code in the entire northern state of Uttar Pradesh, as well as many cities across the country, but violent protests were still reported from state capital Lucknow. India remained in the grip of widespread protests with marches taking place in major cities. Yeah! Tensions escalated in the country last week when Parliament passed the Citizenship Amendment Act, which permits the regularization of the Hindus, Sikhs, Buddhists, Christians, Parsis and Jains from neighboring Afghanistan, Pakistan and Bangladesh who arrived in India before December 31, 2014. The government appealed for calm and said the amendment did not apply to Indian citizens and the minority Muslim community had nothing to fear. The United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights has criticized the law by calling it fundamentally discriminatory in nature. Kat Dumaraos, UNTV News and Rescue. An unidentified gunman opened fire Thursday outside the Moscow headquarters of Russia's top security agency, killing one officer and wounding five others, officials said. The Federal Security Service, or FSB, said the assailant was acting alone and did not enter its building. Earlier, it said the assailant had been killed. The health ministry said that five other people were wounded in the shooting, including two security officers who were badly injured by the gunman. The agency, which is the main successor agency to the Soviet-era KGB, would not give further details or comments on the attacker's motives. President Trump is expected to sign it into law as part of the overall spending package. Some advocates warn that more action is needed to reduce teenage vaping of e-cigarettes. I could make details why. The House and Senate have now passed a provision that would ban the sale of tobacco and e-cigarettes to anyone under 21. At a time when Congress and the Trump administration are facing public pressure to reduce the soaring rates of teenage vaping, President Trump has spoken in favor of increasing the age limit and is expected to sign the measure into law as part of the overall spending package. 19 states and more than 500 cities and towns have already raised the age to 21, setting it as a national age limit is viewed as an effort to appease those who are calling for a full ban on e-cigarettes or a flavor ban to prevent addicting a new generation to nicotine. The measure had received the backing of many companies in the tobacco and e-cigarette industry as part of a business campaign to soften the public backlash against marketing that appealed to minors. Still, many supporters outside the industry said setting a national age of 21 was significant. The higher age restrictions took an added urgency as new federal surveys showed another spike in teenage use of e-cigarettes and as thousands of people, mostly younger adults, suffered severe lung injuries in the last several months that have been largely attributed to vaping THC-related products. On Thursday, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention said that 54 people had died and 2,506 cases of lung-related illnesses had been reported. The twin public health crisis pressured some states to impose bans on sales of flavored e-cigarettes, although the vaping industry has challenged many of those efforts in court. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue. We sometimes see our fellow man, the Adas, in the streets asking for alms or a small amount of cash, knocking on the doors of motorists' vehicles. But the residents of Baseco area in Tundo, Manila, were surprised that they were visited by native Adas with a traditional dance and special gifts all the way from Tarlac province. Bernardades tells us why. Native Aita surprised the residents of Baseco in Tondo, Manila City this morning with their harvested sweet potatoes. Each of the 4,500 residents received 2 kg each as a gift. The Aitas happily distributed a total of 10,000 kilos of sweet potato together with policemen and soldiers. The Baseco residents said they were surprised with this gesture from the Aitas. Masaya po kasi kahit ganun po sila nakapagbigay po sila sa mga kapwa tao nila. Masaya kasi nakakatulong naman din pa paano sila sa atin. Talagang kami na mangha dahil for the first time naisip namin na yung palang maita pala ay pati palang uh, gusto niya tipa na mag-share na kayo ng blessing sa kanilang masaganang ani sa bukid. Kaya sabi ng mga tao ay kakatuwa naman sila, buti pa sila. 
marunong mag-share. Bernard Dadis, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. And those are the reasons behind the news this December 20, 2019. On behalf of Rosalie Cause, I am Alex Baltasar. And before we close, we will recap with today's significant sound bites because we need to know, we will always ask why. Good evening. Their acquittal does not necessarily translate to reinstatement. Ang PNP siya ang mismo, ang siyang uh, magre-reinstate sa kanila, magre-restore into uh, full duty status. Uh, subalit, naroon pa rin sa kanila ang, ang uh, option kung nais na nilang umalis sa servisyo. Yun na nga yung lagi namin sinasabi, makipag-cooperate sa amin yung mga kapulisan, mga kasundaluhan para makuha na itong mga at-large na ito kasi nakakatakot pa rin. Especially ngayon, may guilty verdict na resulta. When he says that, what do you mean? What does he mean? Uh, yeah. Let's wait. He said he will make an important announcement on January 6. Kami naman ha, dahil for the first time, naisip namin na yung palang maita pala, yung ating palang uh, gusto niya, yung palang mag-share na kayo ng blessing sa kanilang masaganang ani sa bukid.